Hey guys, I'm Molly from Everyday Gymnastics and today I'm going to be telling you everything you should know before starting gymnastics. So I hope you guys like this video, I hope it's informative and before we get started please remember to click that red button down below that says subscribe and also hit the bell so that you will be notified every time I post. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first topic I'm going to talk about is what to wear to a gymnastics class. When starting out, it might not be necessary to buy a leotard, and leotards can be expensive. So first thing, you might want to wear just like a tank top and shorts. And some people think that loose fitted clothing is best for gymnastics. No, 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 no. Try to wear like a tight tank top and maybe spandex or even sports shorts will be fine but the tight of clothes the better it will be. Once you decide that you want to get your first leotard, GK has very good leotards but they can be expensive. So one site that I like is Plum Practice Wear because their leos are usually around $25 and they're also nice whereas GK's leos are around $60. And then once you have your leotard you can wear just a leotard or you can add on spandex or leggings for the bottom. Some gyms make you wear no shorts just the leotard, but some like mine, mine is very relaxed, you can wear whatever you'd like as long as you have a leotard on. So I wear just a leotard, but a lot of my friends wear shorts with it. Once you figure out what you're going to wear to your class, you have to think about how you're going to do your hair. So I would say you definitely should wear it up somehow. So if you have kind of short hair, it's not going to get in the way, you can just put it in a ponytail. But if you're like me and you have really long and thick hair, I would recommend a bun. Whether it's a bun like me where it's just kind of messy or a tight ballerina bun. Another thing that will be useful throughout your years as a gymnast are scrunchies. So I have so many because they're my best friend. And it really depends on your hair. So I have really thick hair so I'm in need of a stretchy and durable scrunchie. And I could not do gymnastics without my scrunchie. Whereas other people may be able to use a tiny one like this. So it really depends on your hair, but I would say buns plus scrunchies equals perfect. Alright, so now I'm going to run through the four events in women's artistic gymnastics. So I will acknowledge there are other things such as men's artistic gymnastics, rhythmic gymnastics, tumbling, trampolining, a lot of different variations, but what I do is women's artistic. So the first event is vault, and basically for the different levels you can go over different things. So level 3 and under, you'll vault onto a big mat called a resi. But once you get to level 4 and higher, you will go over the actual table. So the first skill you learn over it is not too hard, it's a front handspring. Basically, the summary of vault is you run really hard down a long runway. You jump on the springboard in whichever way you want to execute your vault. Then you put your hands on your table do your skill off and stick it on the floor and that's it. It's over in 10 seconds. It's actually my favorite event and what I do is call it your chanko because at level 8 you have to include a flip so it can't just be a front handspring but this is a lot of information that you don't necessarily need right when you start gymnastics but I thought I'd just give you a preview of what the future looks like. The event that comes after vault is the uneven bars and there's not that much to say for these besides there is one lower bar and one that's higher and you basically just do elements like you're hanging by your hands and you're doing flips in between the two bars so you're just going to stay on the lower bar until you get to level four and then you'll jump to the high bar and basically you're just going to do skills on both bars including a mount and a dismount obviously they're going to get progressively harder as you move up the levels and soon you'll be switching between you'll go low bar skills, jump to high bar, do a release back to low bar, release back up to high bar, and then you'll dismount. It's just a lot of fun, but it's very fast, and actually it's my hardest event to do stuff on. The other thing that you might want to know is for the future, and it's that once you get to a higher level as a gymnast, you might use grips, which are you put a wristband on, some Velcro, and then it covers over your hand, so it's going to protect your hands and also help you get a better grip on the bar so you don't slip off. The next event is Balance Beam, aka Beam, and this is the most widely spread, scariest event, I would say, because you're going to be doing skills on a piece of wood that is four inches wide and four feet up off the ground. So it's high and skinny and you have to do skills on it. 
But don't worry, you're not going to be throwing a back layout on the beam as soon as you get it on the floor. Because when you're doing a layout on the floor at level 7, you're only going to be doing a back handspring on the beam. At most gyms, there are a wide range of beams. So there will be beams that are touching the floor, and then a low beam, and then a medium beam, and a high beam. So you'll be able to work up to the skills, and you'll have your coaches there to help you. So don't worry. And event number four in women's artistic gymnastics is the floor exercise. A lot of people love this one because, I mean, you can't, you can fall on floor, but it's not like you're falling off equipment. That's my dog. But basically, what you're gonna do in a competition floor routine is you have your floor music and you're going to do dance elements, tumbling elements, and choreography, and it is a lot of fun. On floor, you're going to learn a bunch of skills that are going to be the roots of every other event. Then two other small things I want to mention is trampoline and the pit. So trampoline is just going to give you extra bounce so that you can learn skills with more forgivingness because the trampoline will shoot you up and you will go higher than normal and have more time to complete your skill. And then the pit. I mean, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but some people may look at it and be like, okay, it's fun, but what's the purpose? So the purpose is that you can just attempt new skills with having no idea what you're doing, and if you mess up, the pit will be there to cushion your landing and you most likely won't get hurt. I'm just going to do like lightning round of do's and don'ts. That might help you along so that you just know like the unspoken rules of gymnastics. Do trust your coach. They are not going to tell you to do something that you're not ready to do. Do cheer for your teammates. Now, gymnastics, even though it's an individual sport, it is a team sport and the only way you're going to get through it is with their help, so you might as well help them also. You're going to be useful for every single time you do gymnastics. Stay tight. And the last do is to wait for your coach to be ready if they're spotting you on something because you don't want to go and then them not see you and like hit you or not spot you and then you get hurt or if another kid is vaulting and they're not off the mat yet, you don't want to go until they are safely out of the way. So that leads us into the don'ts. Don't run down the runway without looking. You might get hit. Don't go do a skill when somebody else is still on the equipment. And lastly, something that you may not know because I didn't know until I was on the team is to not fall with your hands behind you. So if you fall backwards, you want to hug yourself or put your hands up by your ears and then you'll be safe, but you do not want to put them back there because if you're falling hard enough and they hit the wrong way, you could like break your elbows or something like that. Now I'm going to just let you know some of the basic positions that we stretch in so that when you get to your class, if the teacher says something, you will know what it is, or these are very good ones to practice when you're alone at home. You're going to want to know a straddle, a bridge, pike position, and splits. So the last pieces of information I'm going to bring you are very common and important body shapes used in gymnastics. So first up is the hollow hold and this body shape is going to be the root of a bunch of your skills and how your skills are just going to look so pretty like this. So this is definitely something that you want to master. And kind of the opposite of a hollow is an arch position. And this isn't going to be used nearly as much, but it is definitely something you should know. You should know how to point your toes also. So if you've ever seen a picture of a ballerina's feet, they look really, really good. They're pointed super hard, so you want to make sure you're not curling your toes. You should be pointing your whole foot. Lastly, you should know how to lunge, and that is where it's kind of how you're going to start a bunch of your skills. So that's when you have one of your knees bent and your arms up by your ears, and you're kind of in a half straddle but it's just going to give you a lot of power leading into your skills. And the last thing I just wanted to mention was if you are unsure, you're on the fence, should I start gymnastics? Will I like it? I mean, the best advice is to just start and try it. You can always stop if you don't like it. And if you feel that you're too old, you are not. I started gymnastics when I was 11, which doesn't seem that old, but I was 11 and all the other girls in my class were 8. So. You just have to push through those times and then once you start gymnastics you will find such amazing feelings. It's so fun and it teaches you how to be so physically and mentally strong and it's taught me how to persevere through hard times, how to be a good teammate, how to work hard, how to never stop until you get what you want. And I've met some of my closest friends through my team so 
it's just been like one of the best things I've ever done with Start Gymnastics, so I think that you should try it out. And with this guide, you will know everything there is and you will be advancing like nobody's business. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you liked it and comment below if you're a gymnast and if I missed out on telling them anything.